Hi, R1 students. This is Mr. Martinez. Um, if you follow directions, you should have completed the pop quiz section here, um, A, B, and C without my help. If you haven't done so already, um, go ahead and complete that without my help, and I'll get back to you as soon as you're done with that. If you are done with this, you should have written your name. So my name is Martinez. And this is whatever period you're in. Um, next thing you do is answer the following questions. So I'm going to go over these. It's just review. There's no way a student can get these right, especially if they correct their mistakes in the process here. So it says for A, oh, it says pop quiz. Complete the following pop quiz before viewing the how to grid video. Um, a, draw a circle around all the shapes that are rectangles. So what I'm going to do here is find rectangles. If you remember to elementary, uh, level of when, when we learned circles and triangles and squares and stuff, um, the teacher might have defined a rectangle as, as simply an object with four sides. This one has four sides, that one has four sides, that one has four sides, and even these guys have four sides. So you should have circled all four. All right, next one says draw a circle around all the shapes that are squares. Well, let's see, you have to think, think way back to elementary again. Um, I know that squares have four sides, but what are other attributes that are squares? Well, this one for sure looks like a square, so you should have circled this one. I have students that have circled others, but we'll, we'll get back to that in just a minute after we define um, squares in our own words. So in C, it says, in your own words, what is the definition of a square? So what separates it from rectangles? Um, it's an object. Let's see, it's an object with four equal sides. Um, they also need to be perpendicular to one another, each corner. What does that mean? Um, that means that every angle with every angle at 90 degrees. That means that every single one of these corners is a right angle. Okay, you have to remember that. That's what makes this one not a square. It has four sides and it looks like a stretched out square, but for that reason, it is not a rectangle. And also, even though this side and that side and this side and that side might equal the same, they all might be the same length, the angles are completely off. This is uh, an acute angle, this is an obtuse angle. Um, this is also not a square because this side and that side might be the same length, but these two sides are shorter. Same thing with this one. This side and that side might be parallel, but these sides are slowly going inwards. This is a trapezoid. So just for definition purposes, this is a rhombus. That's a square. Parallelogram, trapezoid. All right? Um, and then this is just an equilateral rectangle. Any questions about that? I hope not. If you, if you have any questions, you can always contact me at smartinez at psd1, that's the number one, dot org. All right, so... You should have completed this without my help. It says right here now, stop here and watch the how to draw grids video. And you'll find that either on uh, the uh, uh, website that I have left behind for you guys to view all my videos, or you'll find it on YouTube as well under Mr. Martinez, uh, New Horizons Art Lessons. And, uh, and uh, ask your teacher for help if you have any questions about that. All right, now we're moving on to the ruler activity. It says use a ruler to complete the following activities. Uh, number one, start on, starting on the left, measure and mark in one-inch increments directly on the line. What you might see in my ruler drawer, which is located to the right of the sink, um, you're going to see a metal ruler or a plastic ruler. I'm going to use a plastic ruler. They're both about the same. Notice how this ruler starts right here. This is where your measuring starts. It doesn't start on this weird non-rectangular, non-flat edge. It starts right on that line with a zero on it. This ruler is about the same. Um, I'm going to try to zoom in here. It's kind of hard to see that line right there. Boom. That's the starting point right there. It says starting on the left, which is right here, measure and mark in one inch increments. Notice how this line and that line, one connects into the other. It's kind of, let me bring the camera over. There, it's not working. 
There we go. It's a bit better. I want you to see what I'm seeing. So notice how this line is a continuation of that line. That's because that's my starting point. It says mark in one inch increments. I'll mark the one and the two. The best way to get this accurate is to hover your nose over the top of the number three, four, five. And the six is off the page, so you don't actually have to mark that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Moving on. Starting on the left, measure and mark in half inch increments. Again, hover your nose over the top. Half. Half meaning 50 cents. Half meaning 0. 0.5. What's a half plus a half? What's 50 cents plus 50 cents? It's a dollar, right? So you should be marking the full inch mark increment too. So it goes half, then the one, and then the half, and then the two. The only reason why I'm emphasizing that is because I have students that mark the half and the half and the half and the half. But if you notice, this is a big gap. That's actually a one inch increment. You're just measure, You're just marking the half inch marks. So you have to actually mark the half plus the half plus the half plus the half. I want to see a bunch of 50 cent pieces on there. Um, so you should have twice as many marks as in activity A. Activity C back up a little bit so you can see this activity C says use a ruler to measure the following lines to the nearest one-eighth of an inch okay I'm gonna put the ruler down like this and that's about one two just about three inches so I'm gonna write down three inches right there <gasps> okay make sure that you're doing this on your own I'm gonna do that one for you but then the next one you have to do on your own and then the last one you have to do on your own as well Remember, uh, you're marking to your nearest eighth. So these rulers are marked in sixteenths. These are the eighths. So if you counted them, start at the one, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And the next line that gets you to the next inch is the sixteenth mark. So rulers are actually made typically in sixteenths. Some other rulers are marked in just eighths. So here's my one. And now we're going to count every two. One, two, so we're hopping every other one. Three, four, which is the middle. Five, six, seven, eight. You can count the slightly longer lines and you end up with eight. So by counting to the nearest eighth, you could, it, let's pretend that this line ended here. I could say this is two and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two and seven eighths. All right, but it's a little longer than that. So we're not going to worry about that. I'm just to give me the opportunity to learn your ruler a little bit better. All right. It's page one. Page two says create a one-inch grid by filling the entire rectangle below. So here we have a picture of uh, young Goku. So you're going to mark, starting on the edge here. Okay, my, my zero should be the edge of this line. What you're going to do is mark in one-inch increments. One, two three, four. The five is off the page. I'm still mark it. Okay. And most students would try to draw lines going downwards from here. I don't want you to do that um, because if you do that, you might end up with a little bit of this action where your first line looks pretty good. Your second line looks a little off. Your next line is trying to work a little better here. And then your next line would be end up like that. So notice those lines are not parallel. I, uh, there's no way you can get perfect squares. Remember, you want perfect squares, perfect right angles. But if once your lines start getting, going quicker, you're going to end up with trapezoids. You cannot have trapezoids if you want to draw something accurately. So I don't want this. What I want to see from you instead, I want you to, okay, I'm going to repeat that process so you can see it. I'm going to mark the 1 and the 2 and the 3 and the 4 and the 5 just because. Then I'm going to drop down here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I measured from left to right, so down here I'm going to measure from left to right. Three, four, five. And then I'm going to connect these. So I said left to right because if you flip this piece of paper over like some people like to do, they end up with uh, marks that do not line up with each other. For those of you who have already flipped over and made your marks, go ahead and try to connect them. You'll see what happens. They're not going to line up. You're going to end up with diagonal lines, meaning lines that are at a weird angle. 
So now I'm going to connect the top line with the other line. Pay attention to how I just connected those. You can always rewind the video to see how I did that. Okay, now I'm going to rotate this sideways. Back the camera up a little bit. And I'm going to connect, or sorry, I'm going to make marks up here. It says one inch increments because squares have to be, uh, if your squares are one inch up and down, then your squares have to be one inch left and right. If they're two inches up and down, then they're two inches left and right. Um, that's just how squares work. They have to be the same measurement. Notice what I'm doing here, too. I am not making my marks at the very edge of the box because as long as they're somewhere in the lower portion, um, they should connect, they should make squares. There we go. So I've just created a grid over the top of this image. These should be perfect squares. I shouldn't see trapezoids. I shouldn't see rhombuses. I should not see parallelograms. I should just see perfect squares. Okay, got that? Last one, last demonstration is to create a half inch grid over the top of Calvin and Hobbes here. If you don't know Calvin and Hobbes, um, I suggest you go to my uh, bookshelf and find Calvin and Hobbes book. Okay, so notice how my marks pretty much ended perfectly on the edge. Um, you're going to drop the ruler down to the lower half somewhere. And you can make them on the edge, but just so you get used to it, I'm going to show you what it looks like not to put them directly on the edge. Okay, I'm just about done here. This demonstration is just about over. Okay, so what I do want to show you is the rapid way to connect this. First, before I forget, if you can't see your lines through a certain imagery, you can use a thin point sharpie or a pen. Um, just try not to blur out the image that you're trying to create. So if you're already working with a really with really tiny imagery, you don't want to use something that kind of blocks your view of what you're trying to see. So to connect these, I'm finding the first point with my writing utensil, just like that, putting it on top, bringing the ruler up to it, finding the lower point, and connecting. Ruler, sorry. Writing utensil, ruler, line, connect. Writing utensil, ruler, line, connect. If you want to speed this process, if you hate drawing grids, this will speed up the process. And you'll probably do it um, about five times faster. Keep in mind that I'm also drawing all the way up to the edge. I'm noticing a lot of students not drawing their marks all the way up to the edge. Your, your grid should be from beginning to end. So there's one. Sorry, half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, and then the five is at the bottom. Okay, now half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, and then five at the bottom. And then make your connections. There you go. One. So to repeat, pen, line, pen. So the reason why this is a lot faster is so you don't have to find this point and then the other point and then look up to realize that you're misaligned again and then the other point and then connect. That takes a long time because you're teetering and tottering until both lines are perfectly like little ants on a log. That takes a lot more effort then to simply put your pencil on the line and then just find one dot. Pencil on the line, bring the ruler up to it, find the other dot, connect. Pencil on the line, oh, hold on. Ruler and connect. And there you have it. You got a perfect little grid over the top of Calvin and Hobbes. And then you can use this information. Uh, this grid is going to go over the top of your picture that you choose for your project and you get to grid it and then transfer that information onto a larger piece of paper. All right, thank you.